I want in a moment to play for you a speech, a speech that JFK gave. Okay. I'm going to play you about a 13 minute or so clip of it. It's a speech he gave April 27th, 1961. Now we're going to get into why this is so significant in a little bit, but he gave this speech April 27th, 1961. You could listen to it and go, oh my gosh, he's talking about what's going on now. It is very profound and it prophetically connects to what's going on now. And we'll explain why. So we're going to play this speech now for you. And I'm you're going to see me side screen and I'm going to, if I have to interject, I will, but I want you to listen closely for the next 13 minutes to this speech given by John F. Kennedy topic tonight is a more sober one of concern to publishers as well as editors. I want to talk about our common responsibilities in the face of a common danger. Mm -hmm. The events of recent weeks may have helped to illuminate that challenge for some, but the dimensions of its threat have loomed large on the horizon for many years. Whatever our hopes may be for the future, for reducing this threat, or living with it, there is no escaping either the gravity or the totality of its challenge to our survival and to our security. A challenge that confronts us in unaccustomed ways in every sphere of human activity. This deadly challenge imposes upon our society two requirements of direct concern, both to the press and to the president. Two requirements that may seem almost contradictory in tone, but which must be reconciled and fulfilled if we are to meet this national peril. I refer first to the need for far greater public information, and second, to the need for far greater official secrecy. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. Mm -hmm. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. Mm -hmm. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, mm -hmm. or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. But I do ask... This is 1961. But I do ask every publisher every editor, and every newsman in the nation to re-examine his own standards and to recognize the nature of our country's peril. In time of war, the government and the press have customarily joined in an effort based largely on self-discipline to prevent unauthorized disclosures to the enemy. In times of clear and present danger, the courts have held that even the privileged rights of the First Amendment must yield to the public's need for national security. Today, no war has been declared. And however fierce the struggle may be, it may never be declared in the traditional fashion. Mm -hmm. Our way of life is under attack. Those who make themselves our enemy are advancing around the globe. Mm -hmm. The survival of our friends is in danger. And yet no war has been declared. No borders have been crossed by marching troops. 
no missiles have been fired. If the press is awaiting a declaration of war, before it imposes the self-discipline of combat conditions, then I can only say that no war ever posed a greater threat to our security. Mm -hmm. If you are awaiting a finding of clear and present danger, then I can only say that the danger has never been more clear and its presence has never been more imminent. It requires a change in outlook, a change in tactics, a change in missions by the government, by the people, by every businessman or labor leader, and by every newspaper. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy mm. that relies primarily on covet means, scripted, vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Mm -hmm. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. Mm -hmm. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. It conducts the Cold War in short with a wartime discipline no democracy would ever hope or wish to match. Nevertheless, every democracy recognizes the necessary restraints of national security. And the question remains whether mm -hmm. those restraints need to be more strictly observed if we are to oppose this kind of attack as well as outright invasion. For the facts of the matter are that this nation's foes have openly boasted of acquiring through our newspapers information they would otherwise hire agents to acquire through theft, bribery, or espionage. Hmm. The details of this nation's covered preparations to counter the enemy's covered operations have been available to every newspaper reader, friend and foe alike, that the size, the strength, the location, and the nature of our forces and mm -hmm. weapons, and our plans and strategy for their use have all been pinpointed in the press and other news media to a degree sufficient to satisfy any foreign power. And that in at least one case, the publication of details concerning a secret mechanism whereby satellites were followed required mm. its alteration at the expense of considerable time and money. Mm. The newspapers which printed these stories were loyal, patriotic, responsible, and well-meaning. Not Had anymore. we been engaged in open warfare, they undoubtedly would not have published such items. But in the absence of open warfare, they recognized only the tests of journalism and not the tests of national security. And my question tonight is whether additional tests should not now be adopted. That question is for you alone to answer. No public official should answer it for you. No governmental plan should impose its restraints against, against your, your will. will. But I would be failing in my duty to the nation in considering all of the responsibilities that we now bear and all of the means at hand to meet those responsibilities if I did not commend this problem to your attention and urge its thoughtful consideration. On many earlier occasions I have said, and your newspapers have constantly said, that these are times that appeal to every citizen's sense of sacrifice and self-discipline. Mm -hmm. They call out to every citizen to weigh his rights and comforts against his obligations to the common good. I cannot now believe that those citizens who serve in the newspaper business consider themselves exempt from that appeal. Mm -hmm. I have no intention of establishing a new office of war information to govern the flow of news. I am not suggesting any new forms of censorship mm -hmm. or new types of security classifications. I have no easy answer to the dilemma that I have posed and would not seek to impose it if I had one. But I am asking the members of the newspaper profession and the industry in this country to re-examine their own responsibilities, mm -hmm. to consider the degree and the nature of the present danger, and to heed the duty of self-restraint which that danger imposes upon us all. Mm -hmm. Every newspaper now asks itself, with respect to every story, is it news? 
All I suggest is that you add the question, is it in the interest of national security? Mm. And I hope that every group in America, unions and businessmen and public officials at, at every, level, every level will ask the same question of their endeavors and subject their actions to this same exacting test. And should the press of America consider and recommend the voluntary assumption of specific new steps or machinery, I can assure you that we will cooperate wholeheartedly with those recommendations. Perhaps there will be no recommendations. Perhaps there is no answer to the dilemma faced by a free and open society in a cold and secret war. In times of peace, any discussion of this subject and any action that results are both painful and without precedent. But this is a time of peace and peril, which knows no precedent in history. Amen. Yes, it, it is. It is the unprecedented nature of this challenge that also gives rise to your second obligation, an obligation which I share. And that is our obligation to inform and alert the American people, to make certain that they possess mm -hmm. all the facts that they need and understand them as well, the perils, the prospects, the purposes of our program and the choices that we face. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program. For from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. For I have complete confidence and the response and dedication of our citizens whenever yeah, they are fully, they are fully informed. informed. I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors. For as a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We mm -hmm. intend to accept full responsibility for our errors, and we expect you to point them out when we miss them. Without debate, Without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Sola decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution, not primarily to amuse and entertain, Mm. Not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental. Not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. This means greater coverage and analysis of international news. For it is no longer far away and foreign, and foreign but, but close at hand and local. It means greater attention mm -hmm. to improved understanding of the news, as well as improved transmission. And it means, finally, that government at all levels must meet its obligation to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits mm -hmm. of national security. And we intend to do it. And to do it. It was early in the 17th century that Francis Bacon remarked on three recent inventions already transforming the world, the compass, gunpowder, and the printing press. Now the links between the nations, first forged by the compass, have made us all citizens of the world, the hopes and threats of one becoming the hopes and threats of us all. In that one world's effort to live together, the evolution of gunpowder to its ultimate limit has warned mankind of the terrible consequences of failure. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, mm -hmm. the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free, free and independent. And independent. Well, 
That speech was given in 1961. You would think he was talking about today. There is an incredible connection between that speech and what we see going on today. Now we're going to get into this. Okay. This is called the Secret Society speech, and it was April 27th, 1961. April, the same month Trump was arraigned. It's the same month I had the dream that I am about to discuss that I had in 2022, in April of 2022. This year, we are going on the 63rd year of the assassination, and the assassination happened in 1963. Isn't that interesting? JFK was president two years and 10 months. This November, it will be two years and 10 months that Biden has been in office in 2023. JFK was assassinated November 22nd, 1963. If you add all of those numbers together, the 22, 22, 1963, you get 23, which is the year of Trump's indictment. It's been 23 years since JFK Jr.'s plane went down as well. There's a lot of numbers here we're going to go over. There's a lot of insight here. This speech you just heard was delivered at the Waldorf Astoria in none other than New York City, the very place Trump was indicted and arraigned, the very place that Ishtar-looking golden statue was placed upon the New York City Supreme Courthouse, the very place the Arch of Bail was displayed, the very place of 9-11. Now we're going to get into this dream. Now we're going to get into this dream. The dream that I had April 9th, 2022. And Carolyn Bissett was in this dream. She was a marker. That's all she was in this dream. She was a marker. And this was the dream. There was a room and there was a lot of wood in this room. And it was some kind of party. Now I'm going to say this also represents political parties who have gotten together and commingled. To my right was a very tall man. And I wrote like 63. There's that number 63 again. Okay. And I asked about him and found out that he was a pastor towards the back of the room. Like, and he wasn't speaking at all, by the way, he was just standing there observing towards the back of the room. The crowd was clearing for a moment. And I saw Carolyn Bissett Kennedy sitting back in the back of the room, shorter haircut and older. In the front of the room, to my left, was a special Christmas chair with red velvet and gold writing. I was told it was a Christmas chair, and everyone in the room was buzzing about a birth, but wanted to make this special announcement from this Christmas chair. So, this is the dream. Now we're going to get into the breakdown and I put in parentheses things I, ju I just added as I was doing this because this dream was recorded April, I think it's April 9th, 2022. Yes, it is. So this dream, the way the wood was, it was very New England, okay? And actually Barbara had helped me with this dream. We, we, had, we had decoded it together. So you have... One that went down at Martha's Vineyard, and you have another trying to rise up from there. So the Kennedys, John F. Kennedy and Trump are connected. That speech is connected to what is happening now. This year connects them both. The birth of a child. The child is representative of who, what the plan they want to birth and who they want to put on that seat. So they're going to present... Um, they're going to present this, but they're holding back part of their plan. Okay. Now this plan could involve Clinton, Bush, and Obama. This plan um, could involve other players that go far beyond them. But I will tell you something. Bush senior happened to be working his way up in the CIA when JFK was assassinated. That's common knowledge. The Christmas chair was there to indicate that it was going to be around the time of Christmas and Hanukkah, 
we would find out. This year, 2023, Hanukkah begins December 7th, three days after the scheduled hearing of President Trump on December 4th. What was in that dream last April? A Christmas chair. It was a marker for something big happening around the time of Christmas and Hanukkah, which is December. When is the court date set for? December. In fact, three days before the beginning of Hanukkah. This is no accident. This is why the Lord marked that chair in the dream. So I would know the time of year it would be. So I would know the time of year to watch for. And so that's why it was a Christmas chair. And it would be around the time of Christmas and Hanukkah. And this is back April 9th, 2022. And the court date is set for December 4th, 2023. So. Interestingly enough, back to the dream now for a moment. Carolyn Bissett, why is she there? In a way, she's like a con- she's like a conduit in the dream. She's a marker to show what transpired, including involving that family uh, at Martha's Vineyard. Okay, what transpired between higher ups in the Democratic Party. You could have the Clintons, the Bushes, the Obamas. You can have um, the others that are behind them backing them uh, as well. She was also there as a connector to JFK and JFK Jr. Now, who do I think the connector is when it comes to Trump? I think it's President Trump and his son, Eric. I'm just good. That's all I'm going to say about that. But I think that that is I'm looking more at that combination than junior. OK, so I'm just praying about that, but I'm just saying that. OK. The interpretation goes on. This is from last April. A lot of secrets are going to be revealed on the New England coast. And then we wrote Biden. He is not one of the masterminds in all of this because he has none. He has no mind with a puppet here. And this is all we're dealing with. They are going to attempt to break all the rules to do this, which they've already started doing. So this was written last year. They've already started doing this now. Now, 23 years ago, JFJ Jr.'s plane went down two years prior to 9-11. What went down at Martha's Vineyard? And what is about to rise up? Because I believe the plane went down near Martha's Vineyard. Now, we're going to get back to that 23 years and 9-11 in a moment. But the dream that I had had January 2021, if you remember, with Biden and Obama and the three separate pairs of shoes. And Biden is not doing well in bed. That's all I'm going to say. He's in bed and he's really not doing well. And uh, Obama is standing at the bedside. And remember, I had talked about this dream and I had talked about the, the Turkish delight candy that was left. And I had fought through the crowd and I snatched the candy away and I represented the American people and I represented the people that hold the prophetic office in that dream. So I have the, this dream in January of 2021. OK, three separate shoes, three separate people. Um, not only plotting to find a way to get Biden out, but to get somebody in that special Christmas chair, in that special chair. Now, why is that so important around the t- time of December? Because it's right before the primaries. It's right before the primary. So this is why this is so important. Now, back to what we were talking about. JFK Jr.'s plane went down two years prior to 9-11, July 16th, 1999. So breaking this down, we are in the second year of the Biden presidency going into the third. Trump being the 45th president and running to become the 47th. And I and I did this on the other breakdown I did. Um, a week and a half ago, but four plus five equals nine, four plus seven e- equals 11, nine, 11, nine, one, one. So the plane goes down two years prior to nine, 11, 
Trump being the 45th president and now he's trying to become the 47th president equals 911 Also, given it is the year, it's been 23 years since the plane went down and we're in the year 2023. And this speech I played for you from JFK is 23 pages long. I found the written form of the speech and it is 23 pages long. This is no coincidence. 23 years since JFK Jr.'s plane went down in the year 2023 and this speech from JFK is 23 pages long. And on top of it, you have um, Trump being the 45th president, running to become the 47th, and equals 9-11-9-1-1. Okay. Now, I have to tell you, I worked on this. Praise the Lord, honestly, that the Lord kept my brain straight through all of this, because this is a lot to take in. We are going to put it up on the blog. Um, so let us continue. Now, let's get into this 9-11 for a minute, okay? The ninth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Tet, T-E-T. It's like a pot. It's really pronounced Tess, but it's like a pot. It's like a vessel with an inverted rim representing hidden or inverted good. Another interpretation of Tess is that it represents a man bending his head to God in prayer and thanks. The 11th letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Kaf, K-A-F, which means palm. It could also mean crown. Um, the design of this is described as a pipe bent in two places. And the concept of bending oneself represents submission to a greater force and entity, the king of all kings, almighty God. So this is very interesting because you have this 911, you have these two letters of the Hebrew alphabet that sort of run in line with what needs to happen and what we see happening. And the meaning of the number 11 is also important in that it can symbolize disorder, chaos, and judgment um, to give you an example from scripture, after overcoming Jerusalem, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon sets up Zedekiah as a puppet ruler of Judea. Zedekiah was a puppet of Nebuchadnezzar. Zedekiah, however, soon rebels against his masters. His reign is ended in 586 BC after only 11 years when Nebuchadnezzar once again conquers Jerusalem, but this time he destroys the city and the temple. Also, the Apostle John saw 11 things in connection with the final judgment in Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 through 14. So if you put the two together, if we put this together, if we put the two Hebrew letters together that we just talked about, which is Tess and Kath, 9-1-1. If you put the two together, you get hidden good in the midst of judgment. That there is hidden good in the midst of judgment. Romans 8, 28, and I'm reading from the Amplified. And we know that with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Hidden good in the midst of judgment, 911. Interesting, right? Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the dream. Okay, because I have I have notes written about parts of the dream now, um, as we've seen things play out over the past year. So this Christmas chair in the dream that was everyone was buzzing about. This is a seat to be filled, a seat that's going to be occupied. Somebody has to fill this seat. Somebody very authoritative in position. Um, somehow, in the middle of this, Martha's Vineyard is going to be involved in this. How? I'm not sure yet, but it's going to be involved. So the birth represents a person, like some, you know, a, a, someone in authority being birthed in that position, put in that position. 
they who the person who they want to take this seat is corruptible. So the person they really want to take this special seat is very corruptible. That seat that they want to announce to replace whoever has lost that seat is somebody they want that's corruptible. That's what the birth represents. Now, there's something I heard today and I wrote it about this dream. And in capital letters, it's a breach birth. It's backwards. This is a breached birth. This is something backwards. This is something not natural. This is something they want to do where they have commingled parties. This is something that shouldn't be going on. This is something that is dangerous because a breached birth is dangerous. The chair was the only one of its kind in the room. And trying to put someone in that seat that doesn't necessarily belong there. Look who is trying to do it. The people hanging out and partying at Martha's Vineyard. Okay, that's a clue. Those are the people trying to get this individual in this seat. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to happen because the pastor that's present, remember that six foot three pastor I told you about that was in the dream, is symbolic as well. It's not going to turn out the way they think. The pastor is on the right. They are on the left. The right is the symbol of strength. Biblically, Benjamin, son of my right arm or son of my right hand, is the symbol of strength. So whoever takes that seat has to do with the pastor standing at the right, which is interesting. So whoever should be taking that seat, I should say, because they want to put somebody in that seat that shouldn't be there, that is corruptible. They want to cause a breach birth to happen um, at all costs so they can get this person in the seat. So Carolyn Bissett is a marker. They went down. Somebody is rising up. The question is, there is a re- is there a relationship between her and the one who went down, a relative that might be rising up to take that seat down the road. So is there a relationship between her and the person that went down in the plane and the one rising up to take that seat down the road? Whoever it is, is going to succumb because it needs to be filled. Somebody who has authority once they take that seat. So the dream goes on now. And then we're going to get back into, we're going to get back into some numbers here. So when the Lord is focusing on the people of this country, this country and the next leader are going to set the stage for the entire world. The pastor to the right represents the right and righteous and that standard that the people of God are being called to raise in this nation and represent what is going to be established in our country through and by the grace of God. It was Dietrich Bonhoeffer that said the church is the conscience of the state. And when the conscience has been seared and the church has been compromised, the state knows no boundaries anymore. The state is more likely when the conscience doesn't check it the state is more likely to overreach. We have seen that so many times. We have seen that. Uh, we have seen that in Germany. We have seen that in the United States. We've seen it in Yugoslavia. We've seen it over and over again. Whatever is going on behind the scenes, or whatever went on behind the scenes, to cause destruction to certain people, meant to take office. The Lord thy God is not going to let this happen again conspiring to take down a man who is trying to lead the country. I'm just reading you the notes real time. Unless I stop to let you know, I put a little addendum in there. The chair is empty because someone who is sitting in it is no longer in it. And the one who is to sit in the chair has nothing to do with them. So the, the, the individuals at the party that have commingled, the one who is supposed to really take this seat has nothing to do with them. So they're conspiring but God's hand is in it. Now, remember, this was April 9th, 2022. 
the gentleman who will sit, yes, I said gentleman, who will sit in that chair will represent the world stage because what he does will affect the entire world. Whereas the last one who fell, now this is interesting because we had, as Chet is screaming over there, we had an incident on the cusp where Obama was leaving office and that's where the plan to infect the world really went into high gear. When Hillary lost and Trump won, the plan to infect the world went into high gear. What went down in the past in Martha's Vineyard is going to rise back up, not in the natural, but to be that leader God is called to be for such a time as this, because it was not God's will for them to perish. So what went down in the past may not rise back up in the natural, but the Lord to rectify things will raise up a leader because it was not God's will for them to perish. Okay. So this is what, this is what's being said. When they went down, God said, I will raise up a standard for some reason. After that chair is empty, a man will fill it of great righteousness. Though they plot behind the scenes, it will not matter because God's hand is in it. Now, also someone is guarding that seat. There were people very close to that seat watching it. So they're trying to really stand vigil and guard this seat because they don't want a particular person to get in there. They want to put, oh, there's Toby with his little diaper on. Toby, you got your little diaper on? There he goes. They want to put who is corruptible in that seat. There will be an account. They will be held accountable to me, saith the Lord. And then was written, the spirit of the Lord is raising a standard. And that's where it ends all the notes from that dream. However, there was written too that at some point there's going to be a time of celebration. There's going to be a time of celebration. Uh, Barbara, actually, I wrote here, was seeing that, that there was going to be a time of celebration. Now, if we go back to the numbers, after knowing this dream took place last April, after knowing it specifically highlighted the month of December, after knowing now this hearing is set for December 4th, which is literally right before the primaries, I believe, begin. April 27th, 1961, John F. Kennedy gives the speech about press and secret societies. Okay. April 16th, 2022. No, it wasn't April 16th. It was April 9th, 2022. That's what I have. April 9th, 2022. I have the dream about what I just read. Martha's Vineyard, the special chair, the East Coast. April 4th, 2023, Trump is arraigned. So all of these happened in April. That speech happened in April. I was given that dream in April. And the arraignment happened in April. That is no coincidence. Also, Passover is in April. If you add these numbers together. Wait, hold on one second here. Let me go back up here for a minute. I want to double check something before I tell you this. Okay. Hold on. I'm going back to my place here because I wanted to double check something before I, oh no, here, I want to make sure I get back to the right place here for you guys, because I wanted to go back and double check something. 30. Okay. Interestingly enough, if you add The 27 and April 27th, right, was the speech. And then you add the 9th, which was when I had the dream. And then you add the 4th when it was arraigned. You get the number 40. 40 is a very pivotal number 
It is a number of testing. It is a number of trial. It is a number of, 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 in a way, the end of one era and the beginning of another. 40 is pivotal uh, in many crucial things that we have seen happen biblically and that we have seen happen around the world. So that's just something very interesting to keep in mind. Now, if we go to the court date, that's set for December 4th, 2023. If we go to this court date, the 12th letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Lamed, which means to learn or to teach. The fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Dalet, which is a door. Okay. Dalet is represented as a doorpost and lintel. The vertical line in the doorpost, the horizontal line is the lintel. It was on the doorpost and lintel where the blood of the lamb was applied on Passover. Trump was arraigned on the eve of Passover. So all of this is connected. And if you combine Lamed and Dalet, you get to learn or teach that there is a door. You know his, who is the door? Almighty God. That's who the, that's who the door is. That's what you get when you combine them. 12-4, to learn or to teach that there is a door. And the door is almighty God. Yes, I do have, I actually have a Bachelor's of Science in Finance from Siena College, just so everybody knows. So this is why the Lord has a tendency to point these things out to me, because I'm a numbers girl. I don't know what time it is. That's interesting. Um, I don't know when the exact time is, but I know the date is 12 4 for court. Now, to learn or teach that there is a door. Revelation 3.20, behold, I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To learn or to teach that there is a door. Almighty God is the door. There is a door of salvation here on 12-4, and his name is Almighty God. Okay. Also, this, this is where it gets super interesting. This horrible covenant school shooting. Remember I went over that the name of the school that was that was horrifically attacked in Nashville was called covenant. And that was the prophetic precursor to warn that the covenant was going under full blown attack in this nation. So, okay. So from the day of the shooting to the full breaking news of the indictment was four days. So if you got the 28th, 29th, 30th and April 1st, April 1st is when it went full blown through all the cycles of the media. Okay. That's four days. Check mommy's teaching. He's screaming because Toby's in the room. That's four days. Now, on Sunday, there was a horrible mass shooting at a party in Alabama. I don't know if any of you heard about this. Gus had actually told me about this. So we've got four days from Nashville to the indictment. Now we have, this past Sunday this shooting that happened in Alabama. Alabama is the first state in the alphabet. So if you go alphabetical order, from the day of the arraignment to the shooting that happened in Alabama was 12 days. You get 12-4 once again. Between the Nashville Covenant shooting and the shooting in Alabama and the days between the shooting to the indictment and the arraignment to the shooting, you get 12-4. These are not by mistake that these things happen. This is very deliberate on the part of the kingdom of darkness and those who serve them and those who are given over to them. This is horrible what has happened, but you see their deliberateness in it. You see how they purposely do it in a certain amount of days to equal the certain thing that they want to go after on the certain date. This is why they do it. Okay. Now, to get into something else here that ties into this now. The hunters shall become the hunted. This includes those who hunted down 
um, certain presidents in the past as well because of what they knew and what they probably planned on exposing. Um, and this involves those family lines that participated in that. Now, I'm going to read these three words excerpts for you. And I'm going to show you what is happening because this is where the flip is happening. This is where you're going to see the tables begin to turn. This is where that big turn we've completely entered. So I'm going to read first April 7th, 2023. The persecuting spirit has been sent forth with force to intimidate the people through the events unfolding in your nation. Those who grin at such what is sad pathetic group says the lord they shall find themselves flat on their backs those grins will not last for long as they think they have hunted down prey the hunter shall become the hunted this will echo in this season once again it has gone forth however the hunters have set themselves up to become prey for they shall be hunted down by their own agendas, by their own accusations, by their own weapons of destruction, that they shall lose control of these beasts and they shall become the hunted for what they have done. Then you have July 12th, 2022. Now, what's interesting is we were talking in this how about how you not get Biden to want to be the front man anymore because right now he's one of the front men and he's one of the puppets in this and remember he lost a son Bo and then you have Hunter right and what is going on with Hunter Biden and I wrote in here the hunter shall become the hunted when you hunt something you are looking to take it down or capture like a manhunt, those end many times in the perpetrator's death. The hunter shall become the hunted, and hunted is capitalized. So, and it goes on to talk about the potential of what would happen if things flip suddenly in this nation. And those who are making certain people the front men suddenly had to flip them. And this is what this was talking about here. Um, let me see what else it says here so I can go over this with you. And I had referenced in here too that vision that I had where I saw the dome of St. Peter's Basilica and the dome of the Capitol. And I saw this really horrific looking demonic entity on it that had the head of a dog and it had wings and it was trying to guard its territory. It was trying to brood over it. I had mentioned that in here as well on July 12th, but the most telling, the most telling excerpt of this, of the three that are here is from September 14th, 2020. So almost three years ago, this word was given. The hunt is on, says the Lord, the hunt is on. The hunter shall suddenly switch in the blink of an eye and become the hunted. For I, the Lord God, am reversing the current. I am reversing the current. For many are attempting to create a current that runs opposite Almighty God, that opposes the people of God, a raging river of a current. Rage being the key word, my children. There is an attempted advance of a raging river, and raging rivers are bumpy. They are furious. However, I, the Lord, starting Rosh Hashanah, now this was years ago, shall bring forth strategic events that shall begin to reverse the current, the rapids. Now, on March 27th, this story breaks. But look, look at what's below this picture. So if we scroll down a little bit, the hunters are being hunted. That was in the headline of this story. The first time the Lord said to me, the hunter shall become the hunted was actually November of 2019, which is that excerpt is not in here. Uh, and then September 14th, 2020, the Lord repeated it. And the Lord at key times has repeated it. But if you notice in that, the hunters, I think it says the hunters are being hunted. If we could put that headline back up, the strip of it will show everyone. The hunters are being hunted. 
That's the headline. Since the GOP won the House Representatives majority in 2022, once committee, one committee after another has been set up to investigate the D.C. swamp creatures. That's a good way to put them. It looks like none of them will slither away from that spotlight. So isn't that interesting that this had the hunters are being hunted? This is coming back. The Lord first stated this. Thank you for that. In 2019. And then in in September of 2020, in fact, if we want, I'll look it up real time. I'll look it up real time. Hunters hunted. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. The hunter shall become the hunted. I may have to go look this up. You know, it was November 2019. I remember. That's the first time the Lord said it to me. Let's see. No, that's prophetic code prophecy. It might be in here. Hold on. It may be in this prophecy fulfilled right here. If not, I'll find it for you. Just so we can read it as it was written. So we're not mincing words here. I remember it was November of 2019. Hold on. We're going back. We're going back. We're going up. Is this it? Hold on. Let's see here. Is it November 26th? It may not be the November 26th one. It may be the other, the one that's after that. But it's saying it's in here. Let's see. I remember it was the hunter shall become the hunted. And it was November 2019 that it was given. Nope. Oh, my goodness. I may have to find it and put it up on the blog for all of you because. um, Nope, that's not it either. But I remember it was November of 2019 and it was the hunter shall become the hunted and the hunted are soaring on to glory. I believe that was the excerpt. So we'll find it on the blog and we'll post it. Amanda Grace, the number four him.blogspot.com. So that was the first mention of it ever. Uh, and then it went on from there and the Lord at key points would reiterate it to me like July 12th, 2022. That was reiterated to me. And then again, April 7th, 2023, it was again reiterated. And so the Lord tends to do this with me at times at key points with things that are going on to reiterate it. Interesting. The date of that is interesting too, the month of July. That's interesting also, but I'll get into that another time, but that's an interesting point also. So this is where now I'm going to get into some a few other things here because I told you there's a lot here. Now, we're also going to get into the time right now. We're going to discuss the time of the eagle and the vultures because this has everything to do with what we've just discussed. Everything to do with what's happened to leaders. Everything to do with what's happening now. So, the eagle, the time of the eagles and the vultures. Okay. So, the eagle... Soars higher to get a better view of a bigger area. The vulture focuses on one dying or dead animal slash person and circles low and waits for its opportunity. So we have eagles who fly high and vultures who fly low. And then you have, in between, you have the ravens who will harass the eagle while trying to steal the vulture's meal, which I find that very interesting. They'll harass the eagle, and at the same time, they'll try to steal the vulture's meal. I would call the ravens in this the media. I would call them the the media because ravens are incredibly intelligent and opportunistic animals. Incredibly intelligent. They It was ravens who 
brought meat and food to Elijah to feed him when he was staying away, far away from Jezebel. Uh, it was ravens who fed Elijah because they're that intelligent and, and the Lord commanded them and they did so because they're his creation. So right now you have the time of the eagles and the vultures, and then you have the ravens who are the media. There are leaders who need to make a choice to come up higher with the Lord, or they're going to get completely surrounded. You have legal vultures, you have judicial vultures, you have political vultures, you have religious vultures, all circling low and tight right now, waiting for leadership to wane, for freedom to wane and die, for the will of the people to wane and die. The vultures feast on what has already been, what? Hunted. Hunter shall become the hunted. The vultures feast on what has already been hunted or has died, while the eagle is the hunter that has the vision to pinpoint its target and swoop down and take it. Now, how does this biblically line up? Well, I'll tell you. There is some historical confusion between the eagle, which is nesher, in Hebrew, and the vulture, which is Ayit in Hebrew, in regard to their Hebrew names. This confusion has not been resolved until this very day. And sometimes you find conflicting definitions when it comes to this. But the main difference between the two birds, besides their, you know, comparisons physically and physiologically, is that the eagle is a predator, whereas the vulture is a scavenger feeding chiefly on carrion and reputed to gather with others in anticipation of the death of a sick or injured animal or person. Although they may look alike, there is a major difference between the two that is well noticed in biblical Hebrew. The eagle is viewed symbolically as a positive bird to the extent that it is compared to God protecting his people, saying, come under my wings and I will protect you. Okay, so the eagle in scripture is compared to the Lord. He shall mount up with wings like eagles. He shall run and not be weary. He shall walk and not be faint or, or grow tired. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So the eagle symbolic, symbolically is compared to God protecting his people, right? As an eagle guards its nest and guards its young, and it basically spreads its wings over it, so does God protect his people. But a vulture doesn't protect anything. It looks to profit off of the misfortune of something else. So while eagles look to protect, vultures look to profit off of the misfortune of something else. This powerful imagery inspired the adaptation of the bald eagle as the U.S. national emblem. The imagery of the eagle and the Lord is what inspired it to become the U.S. national emblem in June 20th, 1782. The mere name comes from the root nashar, which means to fall out or to be bald. This leaves no doubt about America's choice of its emblem. It's biblical and it reflects the godliness of what was inspired to be written, which was the Constitution and Declaration of Independence for this nation. The eagle carries the character of a mighty warrior, and at the same time, it is the protecting fatherly manifestation of God. Indeed, the last two Hebrew letters of the Hebrew word nesher, which is eagle, means a price. Because we are bought with a price. This nation was bought with a price. Nesher, which means eagle, the last two letters of the Hebrew word means price. Because this nation was bought with a price. Now, it also means mighty warrior. Because this nation was bought with a price by mighty warriors who fought for it. And who are fighting for it every single day. Now, the bald eagle becomes a national symbol June 20th, 1782. 
Now, this is wild. If you add 1782 together, okay, plus the two in June 20th, Okay, so if you had the two and the one and the seven and the eight and the two because zero has no value, you get 20. So it was June 20th, right? And if you add June 20th, well, June of 2020, but it's also the month of June that the bald eagle becomes a national symbol. Symbol. And 2020 is also conveniently chosen because they chose to send their plans at the beginning of 2020 in to hyperdrive. Now, let's go on because we just have a little bit more here. If you go to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 13, it says, These moreover you shall detest among the birds. They are abhorrent not to be eaten. Now, this is interesting. The eagle and the vulture and the buzzard, which is like a vulture, the eagle and the vulture. Isn't that interesting? Leviticus 11, chapter 13. You think the Lord knew something? I think he did because he knows everything. Now, Hosea chapter 9. Oh, my goodness gracious. We're going to get into Hosea for a few minutes because Hosea ties a lot of this together of what we see going on. So, because the Lord talks about the forefathers in here, it's very interesting. It runs very parallel between Israel and the United States of America and what happened and what happened through the years and what we see happening now. So Hosea chapter nine, verse one. Do not rejoice, O Israel, with exultation like the nations, for you have played the harlot forsaking your God. You have loved harlots earning on every threshing floor. The threshing floor is where the omer of wheat that is bound during the 50 day period between Passover and Pentecost is taken to the threshing floor and then beaten to separate the wheat from the chaff. Okay. Hosea chapter 9, verses 8 through 11. Ephraim. Now, Ephraim was one of Joseph's sons, remember. He had Manasseh and he had Ephraim when he was married to the, um, the priest of On. I think it was his daughter. Uh, Pharaoh gave to Joseph as a wife. So Ephraim was a product of that marriage. But, but Ephraim, the son, in Ephraim, the people, got very off course. No, not the son, but the people. And you'll see this. Ephraim was a watchman with my God, a prophet. Yet the snare, now listen to this. This is why I, I, this verse, this is all in here. Yet the snare of a bird catcher, the snare of a bird catcher is in all his ways, which is a fowler. A bird catcher is a fowler. The fowlers have been sent out in great number to try to catch and entrap the eagle. To catch and entrap presidents who wanted to stand up for the eagle. And there is only hostility in the house of his God. Verse 9, they have gone deep in depravity as in the days of Gibeah. He will remember their iniquity. He will punish their sins. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your forefathers as the earliest fruit on the fig tree in its first season. Listen to that sentence. I saw your forefathers as the earliest fruit on the fig tree in its first season. You could look at this from the perspective of the U.S. as well. But they came, thank you for that, but they came to Baal Peor and devoted themselves to shame. They came to Baal. Where was the arch of Baal put? New York. New York City, and they became as detestable as that which they loved. As for Ephraim, their glory will fly away like a bird. 
their glory will leave them. Their glory will depart from them like a bird. That glory will depart like an eagle departs, if it's allowed to, not only from Ephraim, but from this nation. Hosea 13, 13, the pains of childbirth come on him, but he is not a wise son, for it's, it is not the time to delay his chance at new birth as the womb opens, but he ignores the opportunity to change. I'm reading from the Amplified. This scripture, Hosea 13, 13, now applies to the window period we are in, in the United States of America. We have, he said, but he is not a wise son for it is not the time to delay. It's not the time to delay his chance at a new birth. What were they buzzing about? And the dream last April, a birth, because they wanted to birth something into that chair, into that seat that shouldn't be there. For, so it is not the time to delay as the womb opens, but he ignores the opportunity to change. So this scripture now applies to the window period we are in the United States of America. The time is coming to birth. It's painful and we can't ignore the window we have been given to birth in this nation what needs to happen now and to carry that standard for the Lord and birth about the change that is so desperately needed. We can't allow them a breached birth, which puts everybody in danger to put something in that seat or someone that doesn't belong there. The time has come to birth and you can't delay and you have to recognize it and you have to recognize when it's time to push, right? This is the time we are in now. We have to recognize that it is the time to push, that what happens before pushing a ton of pressure, what has just bared down on this nation, a ton of pressure. What bared down in the month of April, a ton of pressure and pain from events that we saw happen. So when we see that happening, we know the time is fast approaching to... a speed bump on the front. There is a speed bump on the front.